But the idea is that you keep planting new seeds constantly. How do you do that? By living more in your imagination than you're living in what is. Oh my God, how terrible. How could you say such a thing? We are not supposed to deny what is. It's the worst sin in many people's minds, to deny what is, to be in imagination. It's the worst thing you could do, the stupidest thing you could do. Um, no, it's not. It's the, the most exciting thing you could do. It's how kids live. Just observe a child, a young child, and you'll see that he lives mostly in the non-physical. What he's focusing on is his state of being, is what he's creating, is what he's seeing in his mind's eye. He's not focused on the circumstances and the logistics and the have-tos and the how-tos. He is still in the original state of consciousness, which is non-physically focused, which understands that the physical focus or the physical reflection is simply a natural expression of the non-physical state that came before it. So if you are always in the imaginative state, then you are always in the super accelerated way of living because you will attract to yourself the things you desire that much more rapidly than everyone around you who is focused on what is, therefore keeps recreating the past into the future, making it the present or seem like it's the present. The present is always the past. The physical present is always the past. So do not focus on what is. It's not spiritual. It's not enlightened. It's very, very stupid. Do not focus on what is. You have to be focused in what you want to see. You have to see only your preference. If you learn to do just this one trick and you take it all the way to the T, if you manage this all the way, you will start living a super accelerated life. And things start changing and magic starts happening. And suddenly, before long, you've had so many confirmations that you know for a fact that life is a fairy tale. That's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it works. It's not real. It's not physical. It's not solid. It's not what is. So keep planting new seeds constantly. How do you do that? Right now, what excites you the most to imagine? Many people have even blocked themselves from even accessing. What do you mean? Yeah, I can imagine something. But at some point, just start practicing this. At some point, you'll get those glimpses that you hit the right spot. Something hits the spot. You imagine something and it's like, <gasps> oh, a wave of bliss comes over you. That's the state we're supposed to be in all the time. That's why we're here. That's how we're created. That's how we are designed. Children of God, so be in God. So what do you wish to focus on right now? If at any point in time you're focused on what is and you notice your vibration is sort of mediocre or low or even just fine, good, nice, which is all very low, you know? You don't want that. You don't want nice. You don't want good. You don't even want great. You want amazing. You want crazy, over-the-top, blissed out excitement. You want to be on fire. You want to be alive. That's why you were born. That's why you chose to be here to be alive, to create, to expand, to play, to have fun, to enjoy, to overwhelm your experience with your chosen creation, your chosen theme, your chosen blueprint, your chosen intention, your chosen quality of consciousness. What is your desired quality of consciousness? And imagine everything that comes with that, everything that symbolizes that. It can be something as simple as a new car, but it can also be something as subtle and seemingly spiritually inclined as uh, a non-dual state of being or self-realization like Buddha or it doesn't matter. It can be anything. In my eyes, these two things are equally as enlightened. At some point, you'll lose complete sense of what enlightenment is. If you're truly enlightened, you have no clue what it is. It disappears from view. If there's still such a thing as enlightenment, you're not enlightened. So. To be enlightened, drop all judgment, drop all bias, and simply know that all of life, all of creation is equally valid. So, understanding that all of creation is equally valid, what is it that you would draw the most excitement from right now, if you could imagine it? Can you find something? Be aware of your vibration, be aware of your state of being right now, and see what you're sending out. What are you sending out right now? What are you vibrating as right now? And what would you like that to become? How would you like to feel instead? Because again, remember how you feel right now 
is going to attract a physical reality that represents that state of being. So if you don't feel good right now, you're ensuring that your future will look ugly. So who do you want to be in control, your unconscious mind or your conscious choice? It is up to you. It's all equally valid. You can create a random life for the rest of your life and not know who you are, not feel worthy of desiring what you desire, not feeling worthy of creating what you desire, but know, please, that you came here to be worthy of creating what you desire. That is why you're here. It's your sole purpose. So you can pretend to be selfless by not desiring what you desire, but you're actually being very, very arrogant by doing so. So embrace desire, embrace what you love, embrace your passions, embrace what you want. When you embrace it, you're in tune with your higher self. You're actually being non-arrogant. You're actually being transparent. You're actually being free. Does that make sense? So always keep planting new seeds. What this means also is don't monitor the germ don't monitor the germination process or in other words don't wait so if you're constantly generating new seeds of consciousness new ideas new imagination if you're constantly in the imagination factor in the imagination state then you're automatically not waiting to see what happens to the seeds you planted right before this moment so what often happens is that we imagine something new and it excites us and then actions start falling off and physical realizations or physical manifestations start showing up. You start to see proven evidence of your imaginative state. Suddenly someone calls you up and say, says something about the very thing you were just thinking about an hour ago. Like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, oh, hey, I got this job for you. Oh, awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. Then what happens for most people is they get stuck on that single thing. Oh yes, I manifested something. Boom. So they start to watch how it grows. It's the best way to kill your seed. It's waiting. So when things start showing up, don't wait for them to fully blossom. Create something else. Generate something new. Always be in that future present. So constantly, constantly, constantly plant new seeds. Don't stop planting new seeds. And at first it might be hard because you can only think of one or two things that you desire. But I promise you, as you kick this, if you start kickstart this, you will reactivate more and more of your passion. And the more you're connected, the more you're able to carry newer, higher vibrations, the more you're able to carry the torch of the one's desire to express itself in all the ways that it can. And the more your body, your vehicle, your mind, your circumstances, your life, your finances, your resources, your relationships, they all start to take on a tone of being able to carry a greater flow of frequency, a greater amount of abundance. A greater amount of dreams can be made manifest through the being, through the consciousness that we call you. Because you're opening up to your passion, you're opening up to your desire. Does that make sense? So more, the more you do it, the more desires you'll generate. Do not be afraid of this. At some point, you'll learn to simply be in the state of desire all the time. Without filtering it through the idea that there can be lack. So then the state of desire itself will fuel you. Right now, you may associate the state of desire with pain, with I don't have what I want, with there is a gap in between here and where I want to be. There is a lack of who I am. But the more you embrace the idea of desire, the more you get lost in the energy of desire and the energy of imagination, the more you will start to access greater amounts of desire and greater visions will start to come to you. Things that you couldn't even think of before. Things you never knew you would want. Suddenly you start to desire these things. But it's a beautiful thing. It's not an ugly thing. It doesn't cause you suffering anymore at that point. Because you transcend the idea that there could be a lack. You're simply in the abundant state of desire itself. You have mastered your state of being in the now. You can always feel good. You can always feel satisfied whenever you want to.